bring to Floyd is that we want to ask him that, uh, that last year when he was here, so the question was posed, you know, with all of your, you know, with all of your wealth and success, you know, like, what are you going like, to leave as a legacy? So his famous line was, I'm into currency, not legacy. So it's a kind of a strong line. So Rabbi Dov Ber asked him, he said, you know, but up in Shemayim, like up in heaven, your eternal life is all based on the legacy that you built. And he said, I said what I said, currency, not legacy. So fascinating. That day in Yeshiva, Rav Gamliel Rabinovich, Hakoyim Shlita, one of the greatest Kabbalists in the entire world, he was supposed to meet like hundreds of uh, guests, American Jews that were visiting, and they were supposed to meet in the new building to have a presentation from this great sage of the generation. And for whatever reason, their plane got delayed, and he didn't know, he's just, you know, learns Kabbalah all day, and he was just, he was waiting by himself in the Asia Torah lunchroom. So Rabbi Rasman, like, notices who's sitting in our lunchroom, immediately, like, you know, command center tells all the chevra, like, you should probably get a blessing from this person, it's a very good idea. So next thing we know, he's giving blessings to everybody, he's like, you know, checking everyone, you know, yelling at people that are not wearing tzitzis, and next thing we know, he, afternoon Seder is like, on pause, and Rav Gamaliel is speaking in the base measures. And I don't know if he was aware of what Floyd was talking about that day, but he begins with the following. He says, Bo Hashem, my father, said that I was, I was uh, orphaned when I was young, but my father, Kanei Nahara, he, he survived, and he had Bo Hashem, a good amount of children, that when he passed away, he had a thousand living descendants. A thousand living descendants. He said, me, Bo Hashem, I'm married 50 years. He always jokes, when you go to see Rabbi Gamliel, he's like, I'm still working on Shalom Bayis, you know, Bo Hashem, 50, 60 years. People come to him with their Shalom Bayis problems, like, I'm also working on my Shalom Bayis. And uh, he said, Baruch Hashem, we have 800 descendants. He, Rav Gamliel, nah, who knows now? Because that was already last year. It's been a long time since last year. So 800 descendants. You know, imagine what, you know, a family simcha is like. It's like, I know a Yid from B'nai Brak. He just, was pa he just passed away in his 90s. When he passed away, he had 1,500 living descendants. And then he pointed to everybody. He said, you are a thousand. Every one of you is a thousand. That's your legacy. That's who you are. That's what you're going to leave for eternity. Is what do you leave behind? So it could be that, that, he, that he got a, a message that Floyd said what he said, and therefore he based his speech on that information. Or, it's called the Ruach HaKodesh, that he knew from heaven that in case any of the Eish Hevra believe that your currency is more important than your legacy, then good thing Rav Gamliel came and set the, set the story straight. But do you know what we really believe? That you use your currency to build your legacy. You use your currency to build your legacy. It's not one or the other. Is that what do you think you're given currency for? To build a legacy. So if I see Floyd today, I'll be happy to ask him about that. I'll tell the whole story with Rav Gamliel, and then I'll mention that we're here to use currency for legacy, because this world continues to a second world. And all you have in that world is the mitzvahs that you did. That is your legacy. What did you leave behind? You know, you could be the money team as long as you use that for mitzvahs. Okay, today's Rosh Chodesh Adar, Bays. I really want to get the costumes. I hope we'll be able to get there. Suspense. I know, there's been a lot of suspense to get the costumes. Okay, here we go.
Mishinichnas Adar Marbim de Simcha, says the Ayy Yisrael. When Adar begins, we increase our Simcha. Yesh Loim Beze Al Pisoid. The Rebbe says here, we can explain this according to a great secret. Dehine Ksiv. Aval Sara Ishtacha Yoyledis Lacha Ben. It's interesting. Sara Ishtacha, Sara your wife. There's a Rav, I believe Rav Leader's Rebbe who just had a baby. He's 88 years old, his first son. His wife is 56. Wow. And her name is Sarah. <laughs> that was in the news. It was in the news, yeah. It's also in real life. <laughs> 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 so Sarah, your wife, will have a Ben, will have a son. How old was Sarah when she received this message? 89 years old. And you will call him Yitzchak. You will call the boy that will be born to you in a year's time Yitzchak. Why did Hashem give Yitzchak his name? Why did Hashem want that, number one, Sarah would, yes, have a child after 89 years, in the, once she's 90, she's now having a baby, and why did Hashem want to give him the name. Yesh Loimar. What's Yesh Loimar mean? There is to say. What does it really mean? You were the Shir. Im Toimar means Akasha. Yesh Loimar, an answer. Okay, remember that. Im Toimar, Kasha. Yesh Loimar, a teretz. Yesh Loimar, we can answer like this. The Yitzchak who loshen schaik, the chedva. The name Yitzchak, what does Yitzchak mean? Laugh. Means to laugh. Means to laugh. Why is Sarah going to have a baby and name him Laughter? And Simcha, Chedva. You know why? Because Simcha Asher Nishava Ali, they lay this Yitzchak Avinu Allah Vashalom Bekola Ilamas. Because when Yitzchak was born, do you know what happened? He's now telling us a secret. All the upper universes started mamish laughing. The whole world, all the upper worlds, without getting into the details of these endless universes. When Yitzchak was born, the whole of the entire Hishtalshalus of Oilamus, Ein Misbar Ein Kates, started going to an uproar of laughter. Why? Ali de Hishtanus Medover El Hipuchoi. Because something flipped from the way that it was going. Do you know what laughter is? Laughter is when something is going one way and all of a sudden, the exact opposite thing happens than you would expect. Why when you watch some 12 second clip that has a billion views and the entire clip is a guy slipping on a banana and you watch it and you laugh? Why are you laughing? You, you, he, he might be injured. You sicko! Help the guy up! What are you laughing? You're even laughing right now. That's not funny. Adam, that's not funny. Because you know what it is? You know what it is? Am I supposed to help him out? I, you know, at least, say it's Philip, you know, wherever he is right now, that he should be well. You know what it is? It's because why is it funny when a person slips on a banana peel? It's because you didn't expect that to happen. You thought when you walk down the street, you continue to walk down the street, right? You don't expect that a regular person walking down the street just whoop. That's not what you were expecting. When something the opposite of what you expected to happen happens, that's when you laugh. That's why real good humor is just placing it where you don't expect them to say what they say. It's just all about the placement of, I can't believe you just said that, or I didn't expect that to be. That's like the punchline. It's all about you didn't expect that. Right? That's humor. That's the lumbus of humor. But why is it so funny, even if I click on a video that says man slips on banana? Because you, you still, you still, your, your brain doesn't associate with what's about to happen. You just still see the guy walking down the street. Okay? You're so attached to people walk down the street and just oilam kimin hogoi nahug. People walking down streets continue to walk down streets. And then all of a sudden, whoop, it catches you. 
and it makes you smile. Okay? Everything about Sarah having a child was the opposite of what you would expect. She's 89 years old. She's having a baby. Mazel tov. That's very, that's not, uh, you don't expect that. Avram is 99 years old. You know, just, you know, my kids, like you get, you know, uh, you know in the pictures, like from school. So the whole thing is like, they have like a booby and a zedi, like pushing like a stroller, you know, like that, that's the picture of, of the Leda of Yitzchak. It's like, you know, like these like booby and zedis pu pushing a stroller. And they're not the alta alta booby and zedi. This is like, oh, mazel tov. You don't expect it. Furthermore, and here the Rebbe is really going to zone in. Furthermore, Avram Avinu Allah V'shalom. Now he's about to get a little bit more into Chassidus here. Avram Avinu Allah V'shalom. Hayim Akkodah Shalmidus HaChesed. What was the energy? What was the underlying vibe of Avram Avinu? He was kindness. Avram Avinu was kindness. Everything that Avram Avinu did, did in this world, he was a chariot of kindness. He had a tent open on all four sides. He welcomed people into his home. Everything was about giving. He prayed for people that were, that were evil. He cared about everybody. This is uh, a deal, but very liberal. Like, let's mama just help everybody. Chesed is very, very powerful. Chesed has no boundaries. If you just let chesed go, it's unbridled, just... That's why, this might sound intense, but the... Now, Avram Venus chesed was healthy, was healthy chesed, but do you know what having incest is called in the Torah? Between a man and his sister? It's called chesed. Like, I thought chesed was like helping somebody carry their bags in the shuk. Like, why is that called chesed? The most intense form of chesed is just giving without any sense of boundary. And essentially what happens if there's no healthy sense of boundary, then it leads to bad things. Because personal space becomes violated. So Avram Avinu knew how to keep all the boundaries. Was his chesed also directed to non-Jews? Yes, for sure. For sure. He, he was, he was Av, even in his name, Avraham, is Av Hamoyen Goyim. He is the father of humanity. Avram is the father of all of humanity. We love, and the whole world is B'nai Avraham. Avram we love, and he is the, the pillar of kindness. But his job did not end there. Even though his energy was an absolute giver, absolute 100% giving, just giving to the max. And even when people asked him to, that they would, you know, like, can I, you know, thank you like, for this meal. He made this siddhisha for Brengens, he just opened up his tent, tons of food, tons of everything. And they said, like, uh, you know, thank you. Like, He's like, Don't, thank, thank the one that, you know, that made you. Thank the one that made the food. Here you could bench. And people became converts through benching. Benching is very powerful. So the Yiddakodr said, and the Sfarim say, that imagine if somebody who's not Jewish benches, and just through the recognition that everything is coming from you, Hashem, and that that can turn somebody into a Yid. Imagine what benching can do to a Yid. Imagine that, what that does. What that could bring us. You know what I'm saying? Benching is very powerful. We have to really appreciate what benching is. So Avram Avinu is absolute love, love, kindness. And he's the chariot of love. And all of a sudden he has a son who is the exact opposite. Not what you would expect. You would expect Avram to give birth to another Avram. Who does he give birth to? A Yitzchak, who represents din, judgment, stopping, restriction. 
Yitzchak is very, very quiet in the Torah. He's mentioned the least by far in the Torah. We see very little of Yitzchak. Avram we see a lot because that's the Mid of Chesed. It just expands. Yitzchak, very small exposure to Yitzchak. Chesed is the Mida of water. Water just goes and it, it dissolves borders. Yitzchak is the meat of Eish, fire. So you know what happened? Ki haya darka lahait the veligma al chesed in kol boy oilam. The halavush shall chesed hu bechinas mayim. And all of a sudden, you would have thought that an Avram Avinu would give birth to another Avram Avinu. That's what you would have thought if the world would just kind of continue on. And all of a sudden, you know what happens? He has a Yitzchak. That's funny. You didn't see that one coming. You would have thought that it would be more Avram Avinu. That would have been the normal sequence. The Yotzim Mena Yitzchak, Shebechines Shoyrish Nishmasai, that the Shoyrish, the root of the soul of Yitzchak, Midas HaGevura Vepachad, Bechines Eish, fire. And by the way, every single one of us should feel and think about, as Faram say, where is my Neshama rooted in more? Am I more rooted in Avram Avinu? It's an important thing to think through a little bit. Am I more somebody rooted in Chesed? Or am I somebody more rooted in Pachad, Eish, and Gevura, and Din? And therefore, there's two parts of that. Number one, I have to actualize what I'm here to do. But it also means I might have to balance myself out. I don't want to get too far. If I'm a Chesed man, I might have to be careful with borders. Because chesed gone too far is not good, as we mentioned. I'll give you a more practical example. Let's say somebody's about chesed. So they always want to say yes. They always love helping. You want to come with us? We're going, we're, going to an, we're going to visit the sick. We're going to an orphanage. And you're just like, of course, yes. But your wife needs you. Mm. So by you saying yes over here, you're really saying no to her. So that's where chesed can become destructive. Because you're blurring borders. You need to be able to say, but I have to say yes to my wife. You need some Yitzchak. You need to know when to say no. Yitzchak is about saying no in a healthy way. Avram is about saying yes. Somebody who's too rooted in Yitzchak, he might say no a lot. He might need to learn how to say yes more. So you have to know where you're rooted in and to feel out your neshama and your vibe. Va'ali de goidel zehishtanus. And because literally Avram Avinu is giving birth to a Yitzchak in such a different energy is coming into the world. This made this cosmic laughter that's happening. And you read in the Torah when Yitzchak is born, everyone's laughing, Sarah's laughing, like everyone just the ganze cosmic laughter. His name is Yitzchak, everything is the opposite of what you would have thought. We're making moves now, Rabbi Isai. We're getting towards costumes. Okay, we're, we're, we're getting there. We should be Zaycha Mamish to Yitzchak. Yitzchak is also will laugh. Yitzchak is a, is, the, is a very messianic name. Yitzchak is a name of Mashiach. That, that there will be great laughter in the world because we think that this world is just kind of the way it is. And we think that essentially this is a world of Hashem being hidden. Could you imagine what kind of laughter is going to happen when Hashem appears in this world and shows all the Rashaim how wrong they were and all that was that were hiding Hashem in the complete v'nahapechu asher yishlatu ha-yehudim heimah v'sayneim we should be zaycha. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Tal tov. Chodesh tov. In my opinion, I feel like with me whether it's a Rasha are you going to sit now and who said anything about circles? No, I'm saying, but I, I just said to, to give a rational explanation. No, no, not about that. I'm saying about like condoning. Like, should I right now stop everything I'm doing to come to see exploit me? Why, why even thinking that's something to do? You have afternoon, Seder. <laughs>